Making a zhizha clay teapot in Yixing is such a difficult task, although it looks quite easy in the video. How do I know? Well, again, I tried with my own hands. This is my dad. He's a big fan of Yixing clay teapot, although he hasn't got a good one for daily use yet. So when I arrived in Yixing, a bold idea came into my mind. I want to make a teapot for him myself. But what happened next quickly went beyond my expectation. We are now in Yixing. Yixing is a city famous for the Chinese clay teapot, which is also called Zisha teapot. This city is all about the teapot making, from the exfoliation to the seal cutting. Like the whole industry chain is here. It's very interesting to know that the clay teapot's origination is actually from the glazed pottery, and behind me are the items found in the sink boat in the Qing Dynasty next to the Malaysia Island, which shows the the glazed pottery products from Yixing. Yixing has abundant resources of clay required for the pottery, hence the pottery industry has been thriving for thousands of years. However, the origination time of this chocolate teapot is not determined yet. Some people believe it was from the Song Dynasty by evaluating some pottery fragments unearthed, while others believe it was from the Ming Dynasty, thanks to the creation of the first zhizha teapot craftsman in history, Gong Chun. In Ding Shu Tang, where the zhizha teapot originated and now massively produced, I went to two most famous districts, hoping that I can find the teacher for making the clay teapot. This is Gunanjie, one of the most famous streets in the zhizha teapot making industry. Lots of remarkable craftsmasters were born and raised from this street. And nowadays, it has been protected as one of the representative neighborhood of Yixing city. <laughs> the answer was all no, because it's too complicated. I think it would take me at least half a month to actually finish a clay teapot and it may not work as well so I guess my wish to make a teapot myself for my dad is not going to happen it's quite frustrating No one was willing to teach me how to make a teapot The most important reason is that they don't think I can learn and make a teapot in just one week This is one of the hot spots for Yixing clay teapot. When I was just about to give up, in my last attempt, a craftsman family gave me some hope. They allowed me to try some beginning steps for teapot making, which are pounding the clay into a thin slab, trimming a slab, joining the edges of the trim slab, and using a paddle to strike the slab to form the shape of the teapot body. Even for one very small move, the results from the craftsman and myself were so different. I realized that what really contributed to the success is not the procedure, but the techniques and experience that determine the strengths applied to the clay, the angle of the fingers, and the use of the tools. Thanks to this kind craftsman family, I'm now aware that how difficult it is to make a teapot, and how naive I was thinking that I could learn and make one within one week. Yes, I gave up. And this is my outcome after spending hours of time paddling the clay. 
<laughs> I changed my plan. Instead of making an Asian clay teapot for my dad, I want to shop some good ones for him with the help from the craftsman family. In Chinese, zisha means purple clay, but it's not necessarily purple in color. In fact, zisha is a group of very colorful kinds of clay made from the rocks in the hills nearby. The red clay group is the clay that can give the teapot the red color after being fired in the can. The purple clay group can give the dark purple color. There are also green and yellow clay group which produce different hues of green and yellow. There are complex styles of teapots, but in general, it can be broken down into three big classes. Guanghuo, Huahuo, and Qingnanghuo. Guanghuo refers to those that have simple geometrical shapes, either round or square. Huahua refers to those that use the teapot to mimic or showcase things in nature, commonly the pine trees, bamboos, flowers, fruits, or vegetables. Jingnanghuo divides the normal geometrical shape into multiple pieces evenly to symbolize some flowers in nature, like the plum blossom and chrysanthemum. <laughs> After talking to many local craftsmen, I learned some good tips about choosing an Yixing clay teapot. The first is to check the clay used for the teapot. In general, we should try to avoid the very bright, colorful color, like the super strong blue or green should be avoided. Second is to check the shape and finish of the teapot. The spout and handle of the teapot should be in good ratio compared to the body of the teapot. When looking from the side, the spout, the pick of the lid, and the handle should be in one straight line. And the neck of the spout should be smooth, in clear flowing shape. And the thickness of the handle should be roughly even up and down. In general, the teapot should look smart and delicate rather than clumsy. And the third is to check some details of the teapot. The hole of the spout should be perfectly round and thin. The hole on the lid should be also round and in good finish. And the internal surface of the teapot should be smooth when touched by fingers. Overall speaking, this is not a perfect teapot, but I think I still find a good deal for this one. My time in Yixing quickly passed by. I found satisfying teapots for my dad, and also made some craftsman friends. Time has done a favor for this little town. It has added more weight to the life of those people who spend half a month making just one teapot. Just like the Zisha clay teapot, adds extra flavor to the tea. After being used for a long while, 